Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will be discussing about the laws of chemical combination. Now this is basically a set of laws which govern the combination of atoms and molecules in a chemical reaction. Now before going to these laws, let us look at the chemical reaction and see what it is. Now let us consider two situations. The first is burning of paper and the second one is tearing of paper. Now whenever we tear a paper, we just reduce the size of the piece of paper that we have but we still have the paper and it's not the uh, other thing that is it's not a completely new thing that we have. It is still the paper that we already had. Now this burning of paper results in the formation of a completely new thing that is ash and we are left out with only ash at the end when the paper is completely burnt. Now these kind of changes which involves uh, formation of a completely new substance are termed as chemical changes or a chemical reaction. Now the changes like this which involve the change in the physical properties of something like the shape, size, color of a material is said to be a physical change. Now we said that this is a chemical change or a chemical reaction. Now in this chemical reaction air reacts with paper and gives out something which we call ash. Now these two things which reacted together are said to be the reactants and the thing that we got at the end is said to be the product. So we define a chemical reaction as a process in which one or more substances that is the reactants are converted to one or more new substances which we call the products. Now let us look at another reaction of that kind. Now this is a chemical reaction where a molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen to yield one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Now these are the reactants that we have and the products that we got are these molecules. Now when we go for weighing these two uh, substances we see that they weigh exactly the same. That is the mass of the reactants is exactly equal to the mass of the products. Now this thing was first noticed by a scientist named Antoine L. Lavoisier and by noticing this he put forth his own law which was named as law of conservation of mass and this law stated that mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction which would essentially mean that the mass of the reactants and products will be exactly equal and the mass of the product can never be more than the mass of the reactants that means there is no creation of a new mass when the reaction was going on and the mass of the products can never be less than the mass of the reactants which means that there is no destruction of mass when the reaction was going on. Now let us look at one more such example. Now two clear solutions of lead nitrate and potassium iodide when combined with each other the result in a yellow colored substance which is lead iodide and a clear substance that is potassium nitrate. Now the reaction goes something like this. There are two beakers in which these two clear substances were taken and when we weigh these two substances in the beaker it comes out to be 157.42 grams let's say. Now when we add these two substances there is a yellow color substance which was formed and this would essentially mean that the reaction is complete now and when we weigh these products now do you expect to get the same result? Yes, we would get the exactly same mass that we had for the reactants. This is because it has to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. That is the mass of the products must be equal to the mass of the reactants. Now this was all about the law of conservation of mass which was the first law of chemical combination. Now let us move on to the second law of chemical combination which is the law of constant proportions. Now a tumbler of water is the most familiar thing to all of us. Now this water can be obtained from many different sources in nature. Now we can get it from a tap or a well or a lake or borewell. 
now whatever uh, whatever source we choose the water is the same that we get from any source now we know that water has a formula of h2o which means that it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms and whatever may be the source of this water it will be the same thing that is it must have two units of hydrogen and one of oxygen now let us see uh, a reaction in which water is formed that is hydrogen molecules which are two in number are combined with one oxygen molecule to give us two molecules of water now let us see what are the masses of hydrogen and oxygen here now the mass of this hydrogen atom is 1u and since here it is uh, present in the form of a hydrogen molecule which has two hydrogen atoms one hydrogen molecule will be having a mass of 2u and we see that there are two hydrogen molecules here so the total mass of hydrogen here becomes 4u now the mass of oxygen is uh, one oxygen atom is 16u and a molecule of oxygen has two atoms of oxygen so its total mass becomes 16 plus 16 which is 32u now when we go for finding the ratios of the uh, hydrogen and oxygen that is present in a molecule of water we see that they are present in the ratio of 1 is to 8 by mass so we can we can say that whichever may be the source of water the hydrogen and oxygen quantity in water must have to be 1 is to 8 it cannot be something other than this now from this we can say that when we have 9 grams of water out of which 1 gram must be hydrogen and 8 grams must be oxygen it is because the hydrogen and oxygen must have to be there in the ratio 1 is to 8 similarly when we have 3 grams of hydrogen what do you think will be the quantity of oxygen that we require to get water now we know that the hydrogen quantity is 3 grams so we also know that uh, the hydrogen and oxygen have to be there in the ratio 1 is to 8 now from here we can say that uh, the oxygen quantity must be 8 times that of the quantity of hydrogen that we have so the quantity of oxygen that is required to completely react with 3 grams of hydrogen to form water will be 3 multiplied by 8 which is 24 grams of oxygen now 3 grams of hydrogen uh, combined with 24 grams of oxygen to give out 27 grams of water since we know from uh, first law that is law of conservation of mass that the mass of the reactants must be exactly equal to the mass of the products so if the mass of the reactants is 24 plus 3 that is 27 grams we must have 27 grams of water as a product now this was noticed by a famous scientist named Joseph L Proust and he put forth his own law that is law of constant proportions now this law states that in a chemical substance the elements are always present in a definite proportion by mass as we saw here now let us uh, see some more examples for a little more clarification now this is a molecule of carbon dioxide which has one atom of carbon and uh, one molecule of oxygen which has two atoms of oxygen in it now one atom of carbon weighs 12u and one atom of oxygen weighs 16u and since there are two atoms of oxygen in a molecule we get its mass as 16 plus 16 which is 32u now let us take the ratio of carbon and oxygen present here now the ratio will be simply 3 is to 8 now we can say from here that carbon and oxygen are present in a molecule of carbon dioxide in a ratio 3 is to 8 whichever may be the source of carbon dioxide now if we have 11 grams of carbon dioxide this would essentially mean that it has 3 grams of carbon and 8 grams of oxygen because it has to be 3 is to 8 by mass now if we have 22 grams of carbon dioxide this would mean that 6 grams of carbon is present in it and 16 grams of oxygen is present in it in order to maintain the ratio 3 is to 8 
Now this is how carbon and oxygen are present in the carbon dioxide molecule. Now let us move on to get an, an, another example that is ammonia which has a nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Now a nitrogen atom weighs 14 U and three hydrogen atoms all together weigh 3 U. Now when we go for calculating the ratio of the masses we find that the ratio is 14 is to 3 which means that nitrogen and hydrogen are present in ammonia in the ratio 14 is to 3 by their masses. Now if we have 17 grams of ammonia this would essentially mean that we have 14 grams of nitrogen and 3 grams of hydrogen combined to form this 17 grams of ammonia. Similarly if we have 34 grams of ammonia this would mean that we have 28 grams of nitrogen in it and 6 grams of hydrogen in it in order to maintain the ratio 14 is to 3 which has to be maintained according to the law of definite proportions. So this was all about the two laws of chemical combinations that is the law of conservation of mass and the law of definite proportions. I hope you liked the video. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.